Hey guys, welcome back to this electrical network design. Now this is tutorial number seven. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to calculate the timing of these relays. So we got four relays, one, two, three, four, that are protecting each one of these five bus bars. Okay, now before we do that, I'd like to make a quick recap on, on what we've done so far. So we started off from tutorial one, where we took a power network, okay, that was designed for a particular location, a new location, then some electrical engineers are called upon to design the network. So we had cables, length that were determined and so forth. Then we needed then to take this network here and convert it into an impedance diagram. As much as we can get the power network laid out, there isn't much we can do if we don't get into the details of the cables, the impedances, because that is what is important to uh, complete the design of the network. So we went ahead and did the impedance diagram. Now the impedance diagram, as you can see here for line one, now this Z line one is a representation of the cable and the impedance and all the elements that make part of that cable and of line two the transformer and so forth so we did a tutorial to convert that power network into an impedance diagram and we want to head into tutorial number three we then needed to determine the per unit equivalence for our impedance diagram because you have to take the impedance diagram and convert it into a per unit diagram that is one of the process you have to do if you need to uh, calculate your fault current or your per unit current. And that was tutorial three. Now tutorial four, we were dealing on the bus bar fault current. As you can see, the maximum fault current that every bus bar is going to be dealing with in case of a short circuit. So that's what we were dealing with with tutorial number Four. Then we move into tutorial number five. Tutorial number five, we dealt with current transformers because you need to select the current transformer that must protect your bus bar in order to protect uh, in case of a short circuit current. So you need to protect your bus bar. So uh, in tutorial five, we saw how to select that current transformer and we went into some of the theory uh, behind the working principle of the current transformer. Then we moved on to tutorial number six. Now tutorial number six, that where we needed to complete then the remaining element for our network, that was the plug setting. So the plug setting, we did them for these IDMT relays. They needed the plug settings in order to prepare to calculate the tripping time for the IDMT relay. So that was tutorial number six. We did the IDMT relays. So you have to update yourself and really take time to watch all these tutorials so that you can understand a solid understanding of how an electrical network is configured, designed, and all the elements that are necessary to ensure a reliable working electrical network. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to focus, as I said earlier, on calculating the tripping time of these IDMT relays. Now, there are important terms that one must take note when calculating the IDMT relay tripping times. Okay, and those terms are the TMS. Now, that's the time multiplier settings. Now, I did a tutorial on IDMT relays, just the basic principle how to test an IDMT relays and plot the characteristics curve. So you can find the link for that tutorial uh, on the description box. Now, if you watch that tutorial, you'll understand exactly what do we mean by time multiplier settings. The other important factor is obviously the actual tripping time that your IDMT is supposed now to trip. And then we also have TC, that is the operating time. So you got TA and TC. And then the last element is the multiple of current setting or multiple of setting current. 
Now, these elements, you have to keep them in mind and you actually need to understand what they are. If you want to understand how to calculate these uh, IDMT relays tripping time. Again, you can go ahead and watch that tutorial I did on IDMT relay to get some further understanding. Now, when calculating the tripping time for your network protection, you need to work from down up. So as you can see, these are circuit breakers. So you got circuit breaker one, two, three, and four that are linked to each one of the relay. So in this case, this circuit breaker is a downstream circuit breaker that is near or your last load. And the circuit breaker here is the upstream circuit breaker that is connected to your incoming line. So this one here is the last one to trip, okay, when working your way up. So the tripping time that you calculate here must not be greater than the tripping time for this relay one. So this relay one should have the higher tripping time the, the, so that the protections is ensured from one section to another. Okay. Now, having said that, let's go ahead without any further ado to calculate the tripping time for relay 4. Now, before determining the plug settings, we knew already that if you watch that tutorial, that relay 4 is protecting the load on bus bar 5. So that we know. So this means this relay 4 is looking out for the fault or the short circuit current on bus bar 5. That is 2144 amp. Okay, now the first thing to do is to calculate the multiple of setting current. So for relay 4, that is looking out for fault on bus bar 5. The multiple of setting current M is then given by the formula M is equal to the fault current divided by the CT ratio times your nominal current of your CT plus times the plug settings. Now, the nominal current is 1 amp. We have a plug setting, so we can then replace everything, and then we find M is equal to 4.9. The next thing is then to calculate TC. Now, TC, if you watch my IDM2 tutorial, we talk about the different standard for TC now. Now, this TC is related to your characteristics curve for your IDM2 relay. Now, TC is equal to 3 over log M, is your standard characteristics. You already calculate M, so you can then just replace in the formula and you find the TC is equal to 4.35 seconds. So that is the operating time of that IDMT relay. We move on. The next thing to calculate is your TMS. That is your time multiplier setting. And that is given by the formula TA is divided by TC. But then we don't have TA, okay? Where do we get TA, the actual tripping time? How do we decide what is the actual tripping time for R4 for a fault on bus bar 5? Now, there is a standard discrimination value that is equal to 0 0.4 seconds. TA is equal to 0 0.4 standard discriminations. Now, this number here is based on four factors that determine the duration of operation. That is the actual tripping time. Now, those four factors are also known as the grading margin. So, number one is the variation from the ID characteristics, and that takes a count of 0 0.1 second. Now, the second one is the overshoot, and that takes a count of about 0 0.5 seconds, and that is because of the disk rotation that continue to turn even when the, the relay call is no longer energized. So you have to take account of that 0 0.05 second. Now the third point is a circuit breaker operating time because you have to remember that you have a relay that is sending a, a signal to your circuit breaker and your circuit break. Only when your circuit breaker trip, then you have uh, interruption into the current. So you have to take account of the operating time of your circuit breaker of 0 0.15 second and the last point that is your contact gap 0 0.1 seconds must be allowed for 
your relay contact gap. So if you add up all of these factors, you're going to get 0, 0,4. That's where the 0, 0,4 standard discriminations uh, is taken into account. So now continuing for our TMS calculation, we find a value of 0, 0,092. Now moving on, we then go to relay 4 for a fault on bus bar 4. So you have to follow how we calculating this thing. First, we do this relay is looking out for the fault on bus bar 5. Now the same relay must look out for a fault on bus bar 4. Now for a fault on bus bar 4, we then need to calculate the multiple of setting current again. But now this time we must use the current the fault current on bus bar 4 and we found the value of m to be equal to 5,166 and from that we can also calculate tc and we found the tc that is equal to 4,21 second and then we move on to calculate ta now remember the first actual tripping term for this relay was based on the standard discrimination but the second for bus bar 4 we then need to calculate it using the tms value so using the tms value we can then deduce that ta is equal to tms times tc but tms the value of tms we have to use the tms that we calculated for the fault on bus bar 5 because remember this circuit breaker okay must discriminate between the two fault here either on bus bar 5 or on bus bar 4 so to calculate the actual tripping time for bus bar 4 we have to look at the time multiplier setting that we got when we calculated for the fault on bus bar 5 so replacing the value we get a ta that is equal to 0, 0,387 seconds okay so you can see that roughly the actual tripping time for the photon bus bar 4 is slightly less than the tripping time uh, for a fault on bus bar 5. That is uh, based on the standard discriminations. Okay, we're going to stop here because this tutorial is going to get very long. So in the next tutorial, we're going to continue. That means we need to do for relay 3. Uh, that is for both bus bar 3 and 4, relay 2, relay four, 1, and so forth. So stay tuned for part 2 to conclude the design of this electrical network. Okay, so guys, if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel. Please hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next tutorial. I thank you.